Hello everybody and welcome to Derail Valley. This is a game that you guys have not seen me play before, but I've spent a lot of time playing in my free time. I've used this game as quite a bit of a de-stressing game for the past couple of weeks, and I decided I wanted to make a video on it to kind of talk about the game and show people that are on the fence about purchasing this game that it's actually really good. It's a lot better than I thought it was going to be, and I was the one that was on the fence about it too, but we'll get into a lot of that as we get going. But first, we got jobs to do. And I don't want to wait around too long because we do have a time limit. So I'm currently at the military base right here, MB, at the top right of the map. And we're going to head all the way to HB. I already have some jobs, uh, as you can see. So we have uh, a couple of cars, four cars there for this job going down to the uh, harbor military base, as well as a couple jobs here. So it's going to be a pretty long run. Oops. Oh, my God. I'm pressing all the wrong buttons. Let's go ahead and get to the train. So like I said, I've played this quite a bit and I have unlocked quite a few licenses. Uh, the only licenses I don't have are actually the uh, the steam, the steam locomotives. I have not gotten into steam yet, but I have every other license. I just recently unlocked the final military license uh, for the $400,000 military license. So there's my train. Up here, we're driving a DE6. And also, just to let you know, I do have a couple of mods installed. Not anything crazy. I only have three mods installed. The first mod is to allow me to use this remote control with the DE6. The second mod is this. It just makes these little vehicle number plate things kind of overlays like you see here. They were that size on the trains. Literally just makes them smaller. That's it. That's all it does. My train's running too, so that's great. All right, let's go ahead and just get this moving. And then the final mod that I have is a um, mod that shows on the work orders before you select the job what track the, uh, the, the cargo is on and what track is going to be dropped off to. So just a couple helpful mods. Nothing crazy that alters the game too much. Just a little couple helpful. So the first things first, we're picking up from B50 and B20, but we also have to flip this train around. So we're going to have to figure out what track is empty. Looks like B30 is empty. So we're going to flip this thing around. And then we're going to have to do the whole rigmarole of flipping this and the slug. Because I don't know if you noticed, but on the DE6, I do have the slug attached, which is really cool. I do like the slug. I mean, let's just hop off. This is not recommended, but look at that. The slug and the DE6 look amazing together. Look at that. That is so cool. But yeah, this thing helps quite a bit with very heavy loads. I've noticed helps keeps the uh, TM temps down. So these temps, the TM temps, uh, and it just kind of helps increase your uh, uphill pull. Even though it does add some weight, it feels like it helps the train grip a little more. Uh, I am in normal mode. I'm not in hardcore mode, so we can go outside view. I can see myself on the map, stuff like that. I have not done hardcore mode. All right, let's go ahead and apply the brakes, put this in reverse, and then we'll change that. And I think that one, yeah, so we should be good. Go ahead and release the brakes. We got to get this thing out of here. Oh, we don't have any lights on. There we go. So yeah, we're just going to back this thing out of here so we can start flipping this around. We do have not quite a time limit, but we have kind of a pretty much a bonus time that we have to get this cargo there by and the one thing that always slows me down when i try to get these these cargo bonuses is the uh flipping the train around especially with the slug because it adds a whole different <laughs> thing of like trying to figure out okay i gotta put this here and then i gotta disconnect and flip it and then pull it out and push it over here and then flip this one and then reconnect so that's what we're gonna end up doing now is figuring out how to get this train to face the other direction. I know technically the slug can go either direction. It doesn't necessarily need to go forward. Same with the train. Technically, I don't need to have the train going forward. It's just an OCD thing for me. That's how I like doing it. So we're going to do that. And uh, it might take a little bit to do. And I don't know if we're getting the bonus. But yeah, so we're picking up. Uh, it's classified military freight from the military base and then this one is also just classified so we don't know but we should be getting 68,000 
for this one for the first load and 52,000 for the second if of course we can get it there on time because if we don't then we face a penalty so I'll get into more of the derail stuff as we get going and then also when we are actually on the way I'm gonna get into just a brief explanation on kind of what's been going on with my upload schedule I know this won't reach the majority of the people that watch my content but it'll reach the people that you know watch more than just gta rp and i'll give just a brief explanation on kind of where i've been with my upload schedule because i'm i'm not happy with it just like you're not but i'll get into that later once we get going but yeah let's try to figure out there's the turnstile right there so what we need to do is come down here stop the train we're gonna have to go forward again so let's get it prepped for that we're gonna have to come down here stop the train go forward pull it in there disconnect the slug flip around push the slug back oh wait a minute hang on a second we're gonna have to let's think about this real quick let's get this stopped first okay flip this all right so let's quickly just try to think about it so if we want to flip this whole thing around it's too long to fit on the turnstile together we're gonna have to separate it so we bring the engine forward onto the turnstile, disconnect the slug, flip the engine around, push the slug out of the way, maybe pull it back into the base, disconnect, go up and around, reconnect, pull it back out, back into the turnstile, flip that around, connect, pull out. Oh, this is going to be a process. <laughs> okay, this is going to be a process. All right, this is totally not necessary to do, but I'm going to do it. All right, so let's go ahead and just flip this around. We're going to close up these windows, too, so we get a little a little quieter in here. All right, so let's go ahead and just pull this in. We're going to have to disconnect the slug on the back, flip it around. All right, let's start slowing this thing down. Let's see if we can nail this, because this is going to be pretty interesting to be able to... we got to get it right in between the two. And full break. Full break, full break, full break. I think we're good. I think we got it. Did we get it? Uh, yeah. I mean, for the most part, we did. All right. Let's go ahead and start disconnecting the slug. Okay. And then I believe it's a little close and I'm a little concerned about, I don't want that to hit that. Is it gonna, when I start turning? Okay, we're all right. It's okay. We're good. Okay, so let's flip this thing around. This is so complicated just to get the slug to face the right direction. Sometimes the slug is a hindrance as much as it helps. But it's just so cool to have. I just really like it. I don't know why. I was running with the slug and the caboose at one point, And to be honest with you, that's just way too much. <laughs> that's way, it's way too much. Okay, let's try to connect here. Wait for it to connect. You don't want to hit too hard, right? There, I believe. Possibly. Did we get it? We got it. Okay. So let's connect this. We're not going to connect the control module just yet, which is the blue cable. We're just going to leave that disconnected because we're going to have to disconnect this anyway. Let's take those off. Push this forward. Okay, so now we're back in the train up with the slug on the front. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring it into probably B3O, which is where we left from since that's an open track. We'll bring it right into the, the entrance of that track. We'll disconnect. We'll back up. We'll go all the way around this far left track, which is also open. And then we'll, we'll back up and then connect. So... <laughs> It's a lot because then we're also going to have to connect it, come back down here, back to the turnstile, flip the slug around, reconnect, and then finally pick up our, our trailer or our uh, our cars. So we're going to go right here, get this out of the way. And it looks like that's both of our loads right there. There's B2O and then uh, B5O. It could be zero. Sometimes they're O's, sometimes they're zeros. Those might be zeros. Might be just B30. But yeah, so we're gonna get this out of the way. 
wait for it to actually clear the track. Usually what I do is I wait for it to pass these marker signs, which this one I believe has. Go full brake on this. Jump off while it's moving. Definitely recommended. Disconnect. Disconnect. And we're good. Okay. So now, I know I'm going a little quick, but we're on a time schedule here. And I still got to flip this thing around. All for just the sake of OCD. It's a little ridiculous. Okay, so let's try to reconnect to this. We're going slow enough that we should just be able to bump and then it will stop, hopefully. All right, and it did. So now let's hook, hook to the airlines. Again, we're not going to do the control module just yet, not until we flip it around. And let's get it all the way back out to the turnstile, flip it around, and then pull it back into the station, and then finally hook our cars. <laughs> we're not getting this time bonus. I think we're actually going to start. We're going to. We're going to actually. We might pay a penalty on this trip. We'll see. We're going to have to make it up on the track. We're going to have to make it up on the run. So it'll be interesting. But yeah, let's pull this around to the turnstile and get this flipped around. Okay. I think we're in. Uh, oh, just barely. Okay, this is going to be a little scary, but we're going to try it for the sake of time. This is what we're going to try. Let's go ahead and close this. Let's disconnect that. And let's get this turned around. Let's go slow. Okay, I think we're all right. Just got to go slow. We don't want that train. Oh, it is right on the edge. Oh, very nerve-wracking. I don't like it. Right on the edge. Okay, let's just link it. Come on. Where's the tracks? We missed it. Right there. Okay. So now, go ahead and back this thing up. Rehook. We really can't hit this hard. We got to just barely hit this. All right. This should be good enough speed to just kind of tap this. Oh my god, okay. We hit it a little harder than I thought. It is so dark right here. Oh my god. What a great time to make a video. Oops. Oh, no, not, no, nope. Oh, there we go. Reconnect that, and let's get the control unit. There we go. Okay. So, control unit it is, is in. It is facing the right direction. We're completely good to go. Let's pull this thing out. And let's get it back into the station and finally hook up our cars. So the first one we're going to do is probably, uh, let's do, what's the weight on these looking like? 76. Let's do B50 first is what we're going to do. Put the power on that. Start applying brake. Put it in reverse. We need more brake than that because we're going to blow past this sign. Let's just do all the brake because we've really blown past the sign. All right, disconnect, not disconnect, but turn the brakes off and then get going. All right, so B50 is the first one we're connecting to. Go ahead and just cut that. I'm gonna run to the back here. I'll try to do my best in editing to brighten this up. I know this is gonna be very dark. What a great time to make a video right in the middle of the night. So I'll, I'll do my best to kind of brighten this up so you guys can see. I know nighttime is always difficult. It's always difficult to make content in any game that is in night. All right, so let's take a look. So B50, I believe. So we're going to want to go that way, that way, and then I believe that way. I think that's what we're going to want. Uh, Right? No. This way. Right? No. Yes. Yes. I was right. Okay, yeah, B50. And then B20 is that one, which is the second load. So we'll hook onto this one first. And then we'll do the second one. Let me go ahead and just do this, actually, while I'm thinking about it, just to help with visibility. Let's go ahead and turn the headlights on the rear. There we go. That definitely helps. All right, so let's try to make this smooth. I know with the controller, I can I can couple and decouple cars. I like to do it manually still. That's just me. We're going way too fast. Let's get this down. I like to get this right in between of about like three kilometers if we can. Okay, and then full brake. 
because I think we're about to hit. I think I might have stopped that short. I did. Okay, great. Perfect. Awesome. We're just going to give it a little bit. A little bit. Okay. Turn it off. Let it keep going. How are we on speed? Almost non-existent. Are we going to connect? Are we going to connect? And we're connected. Okay. Man, this is so dark. I can't, I can't even see what I'm doing. Okay. There we go. That and that. All right. So, this is B50. So, let's take a look at the numbers here. Let's just also make sure parking brakes are off. So, 476. Next one is 001. Make sure parking brakes off. 001. 383. Parking brake off. 383. And 231. Parking brake. There we go. Parking brakes off. 231. Okay. So, now... I believe that's our next car right there. Now that we got this one, I'll flip to this page just so I know that I have it connected. And it's going to track B7I in the harbor. So let's go ahead and go forward. We're going to have to go up and then back up to B20, which I believe is going to be those cars over there that are kind of hard to see right now. Okay, let's just make sure we're actually getting on to B20. I believe we are. It's kind of hard to tell. And yes, we are. We also need to start braking because we're going quick. Let's slow this down. Let's slow her down. Really slow it down. All right. Release. We want to keep some speed in it. Oh, uh, that was all the brakes. Come on, keep some speed. There we go. Okay, let's take a look. How are we doing? I think we're about to touch here. We'll apply a little brake. Wait for it. I think we're going to hit soon. If not already. Oh, we're hitting. Oh my god, okay. We're just pushing this. We're just pushing this thing. Alright, full brake. Let's go ahead and get back here. So we're looking at... Uh, there's 001, there's 383, and then it'll be 231 here, and then this should be the new train car right here, and we're not close enough. <laughs> and this is the moments that I really like the remote. Alright, let's give this just a little bit of power. Just a little bit of power. Just a little bit of power. Ooh, oop, oop, that's enough. And break. Okay. All right, so I'm not going to connect with this. Let's go ahead and manually connect this. There we go. Bam, bam. All right, so now let's confirm the numbers. So we have 093. Next one should be 481. Oops, let's also just make sure. Yep, okay, that's good. 481. Yep, parking brake is off. And 110. Parking brake off. 110. We're perfect. We're good. Let me just skip back up to the train. Get this closed. Get that closed. Okay, forward. This is off, off. Power. We're going to turn this up. Put that back to brake. I don't know why that got switched. And we're on our way. So, as you can see in the map right here, like I said, we're in the top right corner. I don't know if you can see that little blue arrow. But uh, it's spinning up there by MB. That's where we're at. We're going all the way down to HB. So it's going to be quite a trip. But we're going to have quite a bit of a journey. And it's perfect because it's right in the middle of the night. What a better way to see this great game. But in the middle of the night. Uh, for the most part, I don't think we're going to have to worry about too many turnoffs. Uh, looks like we're going to have to deal with maybe two options of being able to turn off here so yeah we'll keep an eye on the track but for the most part it should be pretty smooth sailing all the way back to the uh the harbor in town so we got this one as well this one's also going to b7i both in the the harbor military base uh and we're going to be approaching from the east side of the harbor so that'll be uh we'll have to go through and then kind of back into the military portion 
So this is uh, Derail Valley, like I said in the beginning. I've been playing this game as kind of my chill, relaxed game for a couple of weeks now. And uh, I always thought about making content on it, but it was just a game that I got into to kind of just decompress after, you know, dealing with a lot of stuff. And then just kind of like, I needed a game that was chill, that I just relaxed. But I was on the fence about this game for quite some time. Uh, I saw it on Steam for a while, and I just wasn't wasn't sure because I saw so many train simulators, and I've played so many train simulators, and they've always just been... There's always something about it that I've just never connected to, and I just w didn't like, and was never, like, thrown into it full bore and, like, got really into it. Because there was always something about it that I just didn't prefer. Like, the train sims that I'm used to are just too... I don't mean to use the pun, but they're just too on the rails. You know, it's like you get penalized for going too over the speed limit or you get penalized for stopping three feet past where you need to to pick up passengers. And then there's no free roam. It was always just like you did a job, you did a route. And when you were done, that was it. And that's it. And you're just out of the train. And that's that's that. What I like about derail is it has enough simulation that it feels good to like get the cargo where you need to go but you have the open world aspect where you can you know kind of test things out and like go around and explore and find cool stuff but also you get the advantage of like you can derail in this and cause a horrific wreck and just absolutely obliterate your train no other train sim that i've played you could do that they they've all been just very like way too real and just too much. That's what I really liked about Derail is it's a good mixture of having the simulation, but also having the, like, the, the kind of arcadiness. Because this isn't full simulation, but it's not full arcadey. It's kind of right in the middle. And for me, it's I, I really enjoy it. I was on the fence about it for a long time. Ended up watching uh, Jeff's content on it. He made a video on it. He was doing some streams on it. He, he really got into it, and I was watching those. And I was like, this actually looks really good. Decided to pick it up and it's a little pricey. I think it's $40 on Steam. A little pricey, but I think if if you're in the market to want to experience a decent train game where it's a little bit of simulation, but not over the top, I think this is where you're going to want to end up. So really enjoying it. Looking forward to seeing what they're going to add in the future. And uh, yeah, it's 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 been it's been a blast so far. Like I've I've really enjoyed myself. Okay, so we're just managing these turns. It's a it's a very tight track up here. So we're just managing these turns. The biggest thing that I've noticed starting out is carrying your speed appropriately through the tracks is very important because uh there's a lot of uphill sections and if you don't have the momentum if your train's very heavy you're not going to make it but at the same time there's also curves that cannot handle certain speeds so it's really about managing like how much brake you're doing if you go full brake you're going to lose all your momentum if you hit a point that you got to go up you're going to really struggle like it's a good it's a good balance of trying to like really have enough speed to go quick but not have too much speed to where you're going to run into an issue and derail. And I've derailed many times, many, many times. And it's always horrific. It's just terrible. So that might happen here, especially because this thing is we're in a 60 zone and we're a little over. We should be all right. I've noticed there's like a five to maybe 10 mile an hour leeway with the speed zones. 10 is really pushing it. You're gonna you're gonna run into issues if you're if you're wanting to do 10. But I think this is where our first decision point's gonna have to be. We're gonna have to go to the left. Let's see, we're still in a 60 zone. Let's just keep an eye on the track ahead. I wanna see this. We're gonna have to go left at this turn, and I think it is set to left. I think I see it out there. I think. Is it? Okay, so it looks like the speed is 50, which is perfect. And we're going left. Perfect. Okay. So we're good here. We're good on speed as well. And we're going to end up going down, which is perfect. So yeah, now that we're on the, on the route, 
heading out that way. Uh, I just wanted to talk briefly about like my upload schedule. I know a lot of people have been wondering what's been going on and what's the deal with, with the lack of content on my behalf. And I just want to say like, I'm not happy with it either. I have been pretty disappointed in myself with my upload schedule and I want to make a big push to fix it. And uh, I just want to apologize for the lack of content. I really want to be consistent and I really want to be uploading more and giving you guys more in content to enjoy on a regular basis. But as some of you may or may not know, I moved back in, uh, oh, we're hitting the 30 zone. So we really got to slow this thing down. As some of you may or may not know, back in July, I moved. And uh, I moved into uh, a home that is not a rental. And uh, with that has been the process of home ownership, which is fantastic. Because it's it comes down to there's a lot of things that you got to work on that <laughs> is now your responsibility. You can't just call somebody up and go, hey, you're your dishwasher's broken or your, this is broke, you know, like it's, it's now your, your deal. So it's a good problem to have good problems to have for sure. But at the same time, it's really kind of knocked me off of my course of being of content creation, because I typically get into a mindset of, of recording and content and outside distractions can definitely pull me out of that and take me away from, from what I'm doing. And with the, the home stuff, it's been a, it's been a deal of, I need to get stuff done and I need to schedule things and I need to have people come out to do certain work. And obviously they work normal people hours, like, you know, 95% of the world works normal people hours, but I'm nocturnal. <laughs> I like to get my work done in the middle of the night. So when I have an appointment at nine, AM the next day, I can't do my usual of stay up and record or edit or, you know, do something that I would normally do at, you know, one, two, three in the morning, whatever. Like I'm pretty nocturnal. So when I have these appointments, it kind of throws me off schedule. I get, I end up getting a very little amount of sleep and then I end up, you know, it affects me for that day and the next day. So it's just, you have that. And then I have other things that I have to deal with outside of house stuff. It's just, I've had a lot going on and I've just been very busy outside of YouTube. It's not an excuse and I'm not trying to make excuses or sound like I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not trying to just make excuses and just say like, oh, well, it's just for this reason. And it's not that big of a deal. Um, I just want to be honest with you guys and tell you what's going on. I've just had a lot of projects outside of YouTube that have required my attention. And uh, I've had real life things kind of affecting my upload schedule as well as my upload kind of motivation as well. Uh, I'm not getting burnt out on content creation, but I just I've had to switch my mindset out of creating content into more of a like, I got to get things in real life done. And uh, that's unfortunately affected my, my upload schedule. But on the good note, on the good news, I spent this month which is why the content this month has been even extra slow than it, than it normally has been lately. I have spent this month and, uh, oh, quickly, as we're, as we're going over that, look at this, look how cool this is. Let's just open this up. Look at this. We're going over a station right now. Look how awesome that is. That is so cool. That is amazing. Like this game is just so much fun. It's fantastic. I really enjoy it. But anyway, I've spent two weeks this month of just literally knocking out things on my to-do list. And obviously a to-do list will never be empty. It'll never be done, but I've done a lot of the big things that were time pressing and that were also very stressing to me personally. And uh, hopefully this is turning a new leaf into getting back to more of a regular upload schedule and also being able to get me back into the mindset of content creation regularly instead of, you know, what, what it has been, which is I have so many other things to do. I can't really focus on that right now. So I apologize. I know a lot of people aren't happy with my upload schedule and I'll be honest. I'm not either. I'm, I'm very disappointed. 
and when I see comments that people say like, well, where, where, what's going on? Like, why, where, where, where you been? At? It makes me feel bad because I always enjoyed being the entertainment for you guys to watch. And like, everyone's going through something. Everyone has things on their to-do list or things that are stressing them out or, you know, issues that they have to take care of. And I always pride myself in being like, I'm the distraction. Come watch my content and let's just forget about the nonsense in life and let's just hang out, you know? So I feel really bad that I haven't been able to be that consistent basis of like, let's just, just come hang out for 30 minutes to an hour and just enjoy something that isn't real life. <laughs> Because we all need that. I need that. You need that. Everybody needs an escape. Everybody needs that thing that just says that just, you know, kind of just takes you out of the nonsense that you're dealing with at that time, whatever that might be. So I feel really guilty about that. I'm going to make a huge push the, the last bit of this year because I can't believe we're already almost in October. That's another thing, too, is where is time going? Like this year has just blown by. Like next thing I know, it was it was September and now it's almost the end of September. It's crazy. So hopefully me clearing up my to-do list the way I have will be a big push to get back to making regular content. I don't want to say a schedule because I don't want to let anybody down of saying I'm going to upload this on this day or this many times a week. I don't want to let anybody down more than I already have. I am just going to make a push to upload more. I'll say that. And I have my own personal goals that I would like to hit. And hopefully it will be satisfying enough for everybody watching. And, you know, you guys will be able to start enjoying more content from me. But yeah, that's kind of that. I hope that made any sense. I hope you <laughs> all understand uh, if you're not you know an adult yet or you're a teenager you will definitely understand someday there's just there's adult things that really just suck <laughs> being an adult just kind of sucks uh sometimes but you got to do it you got to do what you got to do and there's things that are on your to-do list that you just you have to do and uh yeah just wanted to apologize again i know a lot of people will say don't worry about it and there's no need for an apology and i really appreciate that and that's why i'm having this conversation on a video that isn't GTRP because I know a lot of people that go out of their ways to watch other content are there to watch me and not just a specific type of game. So I want to talk to you directly about, you know, what's going on. But yeah, anyway, thank you for letting me ramble. Let's go ahead and get an update on where we're at. You can see, wow, we've actually made it about halfway. So we've gone from MB, we went past IME, uh, we went past GF. And now we're kind of in between GF and HB, and we've just made the curve link to go around the mountains uh, and enter HB on the east side. So we're about halfway from on, on our trip right now, which is pretty decent. Um, we should be able to, I don't know about the time. I don't know if we're gonna get a time penalty or not. If you haven't played Derail Valley, how it works is the more licenses you unlock, the more access to time bonuses you can get but you also increase your time penalties if you're late so it's kind of a risk re reward situation the quicker you can get things done the more money you're going to make but if you do have the moments where something goes wrong or you can't get there in time you're going to really pay for it so it'll be interesting to see what we get at the end let's go ahead and shut the wipers off i don't think we need those anymore i think we could also increase our speed just a little bit maybe i didn't i don't know when what the last speed sign was i want to see one so i can confirm because i don't want to go too fast and get caught off guard because the worst is getting caught off guard oh 70 okay wow wow really fast through here I don't know if I'm going to want to do, uh, it's so hard to tell on the map whether the track is going to be tight or, or twisty or scary. <laughs> so you kind of just got to deal with it. But the worst is getting caught off guard and having to slam brakes because you lose all momentum and trying to build that back up, depending on the, the load of your cargo can really hinder you. I mean, I did a trip a while back 
That was four trips in one. It was four separate jobs in one trip. And it was a 23 car train, I believe it was. Uh, I mean, just for an example, like we are hauling um, seven. So this is only a seven car train, but I was hauling like a 23 car train. And uh, we were going up and I was going up an incline sharp turn had to slam brakes and then lost all momentum had to put power and then started wheel slipping so it's i really enjoy this game like i said it's a really really good balance if you're on the fence about it and if you can spare the 40 dollars and you're really interested in in trains and you want to get something that has in my opinion a good balance of simulation and arcadiness this is it like highly recommend you to, to pick this up i was on the fence about it for a long time because i've i've purchased so many train sims in the past where i play an hour or two and i just don't like it because it's just it's too much it's too strict it's too just like on the note i'd like i enjoy simulation like anybody else i play a lot of simulation games there is such thing as too too much simulation <laughs> and a lot of the train sims in my opinion, are too much simulation. If you're that into trains, I get it. It's the same with like ATS. I make ATS as simulation as I possibly can because I'm really into trucking and trucks. When it comes to train, I have an interest, but I wouldn't say it's anything over the top. It's a pretty mild interest and uh, I just don't want it to be that crazy. I don't want to feel like I'm that pressured to, you know, get the perfect stop or like the perfect speed can't go one over you get points to duck you know and it's just i like the open worldness of this i like the option that you can just jump into different trains you can just take whatever cargo wherever you want it's really neat i'm really enjoying it and i want i'm looking forward to seeing what they're doing with future updates i mean they've added quite a few stuff since i started playing this and uh, one of the things that i would love to see oh can we do outside view we're going to do outside view. One of the things that I would love to see at some point, I would love to see passenger cargo, like passenger trains in this. You know, maybe something where you start off at like one location, you pick up the, the trains or the cars, you pick up the cars with the people already in it, and then you stop. It, you just have a requirement to stop for a certain duration at different stations along your route to the final station which is where you would disconnect the cars i think that would be fantastic that would be really cool okay let's also just i want to do outside view but i also don't want to derail while i'm trying to do this and we're going downhill so i don't want to like stop paying attention and then the speed limit drop and then we take a turn and i'm going too fast and then i derail and then all of this is for nothing that would not be great that would not be great at all. Okay, so we have a tunnel. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go outside view. Where's this tunnel come out? Oh God, I've lost it. Oh, here it is. Okay, and we're gonna wait for the train. Here we go. You ready? Here it is. Here's the train. I mean, come on. How can you not like that? That is awesome. Pretty short train, though. Only only seven cars, so it's already done. <laughs> when you get the super crazy long trains, that's when it gets good. Like the 23, 20 plus trains or 20, 20 plus cars on a train is crazy. Like there's been times where I've been pulling into a station and I'm like the my engine is in the station but my cars are like way off on the track just because of how big it is. All right, let's pay attention to the speed limit. Oop, that was the wrong button. How are we on the map? Okay, we're almost there. Got a couple more turns to go. And then we'll uh, we'll pull in. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to pull pretty much all the way through the station and kind of like exit and then flip her in reverse and back her down into uh, the military base just so our train is facing the right direction when we want to do a previous job and i don't know if we're gonna accomplish that is a 40 zone coming up uh i don't know if we're gonna accomplish this the, the time i don't i really don't know 
Let's just go ahead and slow her down a little more. All right. There we go. Yep. We're good. Just a little over 40. I'm okay with that. We'll let the weight of the car kind of give us a little weight of the train. Give us a little speed. All right. We're going to have a turn coming up. All right. We're going to have a signal coming up here in a minute. See if we can see it. Still trying to manage these brakes. We'll be around this corner. We're going to want to go right. Okay. It's set to right on a 50. And we're good. Okay. Nice. All right. Let's go full off brakes. And we're going to coast. We're coasting. All right. This is where we got to make sure we're doing it right. I'm going to go out on this. On the front of the train. This is probably not ever recommended in real life. To be leaving the, the interior of the train. But I want to make sure that these are faced the right direction. So we don't end up slamming into something. So yeah. Uh, right and then left. So we're going to go right down the center of those. I'm going to go ahead and flip this to that so we have a little wider beam on the headlight. Okay. Go right down the center. So let me open this up. So you can see we're entering from the east. We're currently driving through the E right now. We're going to have to continue on past everything. So past uh, D, past C, and then we're going to B. So we're going to have to go up and around and pretty much exit out to the west is what we're doing. Uh, and then we're going to reverse back down into the B on the far left side of this little diagram of the station. So that's the plan. Back her up, disconnect real quick, run as fast as we can over to the, the hub and uh, turn the job in and hopefully cross our fingers, hopefully get the time bonus and not get a penalty. If we don't get a bonus, that's fine. I just don't want a penalty. <laughs> The penalties with how many licenses I have is going to add up a lot. I don't want to go too fast into in the station. I would hate to derail right here at the end. That would be horrific. And if you guys like this game and you want to see me do more of it, definitely let me know in the comments because uh, I, I don't mind playing this more if, if everyone is interested in seeing more of it. I haven't gotten into the steam trains yet. That's definitely something that I want to get into. I was kind of saving those for last. So steam is something that I could do. Um, I could do uh, I could multiple. I could try to do multiple jobs at once, like the biggest jobs. I can, you know, I can find stuff to do if you if you guys are interested. You just have to let me know if you want to see more of this. But yeah, so we're gonna go. I just want to make sure that we're not gonna hit a point and end up going the wrong direction. So we should be good. We're at the curve right now. I know it's kind of hard to see, but we're at the curve of uh, C. So this is the track to go to C right there. And then we're approaching the curve around. There's the repair depot. Let me get back in the light. That's the repair depot, which you can see. Oh God, where's the light? As the blue wrench right there on the left side. And then we're gonna be going out to the west. So we're gonna wanna make a right on this one, that one right there. There we go. So we're gonna make a right there and head out to the west and then back her down in to the military, the military base. So let's go ahead and, and then what we're gonna do is there's a junction up here. Let me open these windows up and this door. There's a junction right there, which we need to get the back of the train to. So then we can start reversing it in make sure we're going to put it in reverse we're just going to let the momentum go probably apply two notches of brake just to start the process of getting this thing slowed down and then what we need to do is we'll keep an eye on this sign and when that train when the back thing back car hits that sign which i lost right there it is so dark then we will go ahead and back her up keep it on the speed let me just disconnect. We are going up, so I don't want to lose too much speed. I think. Have we passed it? Ah, it's so hard to tell, to be honest with you. We're going to apply some brake. How are we on this side? I can't tell. I'm pretty sure we've passed it. Okay. We're just going to go full brake. Disconnect this thing. All right. Let's, uh, we need to, can we hit it from here? Hey, we did. Okay. Now we're going the right direction. Oops. Okay, we're in reverse. 
take the brakes off. Let's back her up. Okay, and then this is the port. This is the part. The port. This is the port. This is the part where I tend to use the remote just to assist with not absolutely obliterating uh, the train. So, as you can see, we're in control of the train with the remote, which is very neat. But we can slow her down just so we're not having to run all the way back up to the front. And then also we can take a look. B7I is where we are going. Uh, B7I might just be straight ahead. We'll have to see when we get in there. B7I, B7I. Can't necessarily see it from here. Uh, oh, that's hard to see. B7, I don't think we want to go left. We definitely want to go right, because I think it is in here, isn't it? We're going to want to flip that and then flip that, I believe. Yeah, B60 right there. And then B, that one, that sign right there. B7I, perfect. Okay, it's right down the middle. Okay, this is going to be great. This is going to be easy. It's going to be perfect. Let's just get back into the into the engine. I usually wait until the engine has passed the B7I marker just to 100% confirm that the cars are actually on the track that they want them. Just so I don't have a weird issue of the game being like, nah, it's technically not on the track. Okay, so we're just going to back her down. We're doing pretty good. What's our speed looking like? Yeah, we can probably start applying a little bit of brake here. Let's do another step of brakes. Okay. Can't quite tell perspective-wise. Are we past it? I don't think the slug has hit it yet. There we go. I think we're now hitting it. And we're also now coming to a complete stop. So let's go ahead and see. Are we past it? Let's get up over here. Oh my god, where did I go? Okay, B7I. There we go. Alright, so. Let's go ahead and disconnect. Try to do this quick. As quick as possible. Boom. Okay. And then we need to apply parking brake on at least one car. This one's the first one. What is this? Uh, we're looking for 231. 231, 231, which is that one. So we need to apply parking brake on this one here because this is a separate job. And then we're going to disconnect the two jobs from each other just so we don't have any issues with turning it in. And we're good to go. And I'm running. I'm going to use the little teleport feature and I'm going to sprint up here and turn these jobs in. Turn it in. Did I get it? Hey, I got the time bonus. So we were going to make $68,000. We made $34,000 in the time bonus. So we just made $102,000 off of that one job, which is fantastic. And then the other one, we were going to make $52,000. And we got $26,000 in the time bonus. So we made $78,000. So we just made like $180,000 off of those two, run, that, that, those two jobs, which is absolutely insane. That is crazy. I'm going to get back to my car or my train. Let's just go ahead and let's just power her down for now. And yeah, that's it. Derail Valley. I hope you guys enjoyed. Like I said, if you want to see me do more Derail Valley, let me know in the comments down below. If you want to see me do Steam or maybe try to like get the longest train as possible or something just let me know in the comments down below. I hope you all enjoyed watching this video and I hope you understand where I'm coming from with my explanation on kind of what's been going on with my upload schedule. Again, I apologize. Hoping to make a push to end this year strong with more consistent uploads. And thank you for sticking with me through these uh, kind of rocky times, but I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.